members of the media. My name is Pumla Williams. I'm the Director General in the GCIS. We are today hosting Minister Patel together with the investor partners in the South African Investment Conference. They will be sharing with you the preparatory work on the fourth in South African Investment Conference that we is scheduled to take place. I just want to, before we commence, just to take you through the guests or the, mem the panelists that are with us, starting with the Minister Ibrahim Patel, the Minister of Trade, Industry and Competition. We also have Ms. Trudy Makaya, the Economic Advisor to the President, from the investors who are partnering with us, I will start with the Anglo-American representative, Mr. Vini, Vimpi Pinar, the head of strategy and program management on the extreme right next to Trudy. We also have the representative from NASPES, Ms. Helen Jovu, who is on my extreme left. And we also lastly have Ms. Takalani Nechitenze, representative from Vodacom. At this point, I would like to invite Minister Patel, but before I invite the minister, can I put an apology in advance? The minister will not be with us to take questions. He's got other prior commitments. So if you will make an input and take leave thereafter, but you can be assured that uh, Ms. Trudy Makaya will also be here to represent the government should there be questions around the preparatory work of the conference. Over to you, Minister. Well, let me start first. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, DG. And uh, good afternoon to members of the media. Good afternoon to the representatives of the private sector who are present. Uh, good afternoon to uh, the team from the presidency and the DTIC who are present here. I see uh, uh, Trudy Mackay at, on the front, but she has a whole team of people <coughs> at the back who would be uh, available uh, for any any support. My job is relatively uh, simple. It's, I've been asked to basically just introduce the preparation for the next investment conference. And by way of a background, I'm sure that members of the media will recall that the President announced in 2018 that we will seek to mobilize uh, investment of 1.2 trillion rand over a five-year period that that investment was intended to uh, support the growth of the economy and to lay the foundations uh, for the kind of industrial diversification uh, and uh, uh, economic inclusion that we sought. We've had now three of the, we've had three of the investment conferences at which the President was able to uh, put forward to the South African public the vision of government on investment to set out what are some of the economic reforms that we seek uh, to introduce uh, in, the, in the economy and also to provide a platform in which private sector players could set out both their own thoughts about the economy as well as to make pledges of investment in uh, productive uh, enterprises and this would be essentially fixed investment uh, in the economy. These were both domestic uh, investors, some of the large South African companies, and foreign investors. We've had some uh, quite significant companies drawn from different parts of the world who attended these investment conferences. The last of these conferences were held in COVID conditions, and... Uh, Members of the media who were present may recall that we had a hybrid event uh, in which a portion of the event was uh, physical, 
and a portion was virtual. And the work done across these three investment conferences yielded a set of pledges of uh, uh, approximately 775 billion rand. And these were, were pledges made by companies in many different parts of the economy, from productive services to the mining sector, agriculture, manufacturing, digital economy. Quite a significant part was also in infrastructure. The next investment conference will be held on the 24th of March in Johannesburg. And uh, Trudy Mackay will be taking members of the media through what is really the, the essential part of today's briefing, which is what that investment conference is about. My job would be to try to contextualize that conference by way of the pledges that we've received to date. Of course, we will be making the announcements of new pledges on the 24th. So I want to look back a little bit. And looking back, as I, as I indicated, uh, we've had about 775 billion rands worth of pledges made. These are where largely private sector players have put up their hand and said, over the next number of years, we will be committing this investment. So where did we get to? Well, I'm, uh, uh, I'm able to, to report now that uh, these investment commitments were made in about 150 projects, to be completely precise, 152. And almost a third of those, 45 projects have been completed. By completed, we mean either the factory has been built, if it's been a new uh, establishment, or if it requires a massive refurbishment and expansion of production lines, uh, then those have been completed, the machinery has been procured and it's been installed. Or if it's a mining shaft, it would mean that the shaft has been sunk. Uh, in some cases, production has actually started. We're beginning to see the output of those investment commitments. In other instances, the um, establishments have been completed and they await production as the next big milestone. A further 57 projects are currently under construction. In other words, they've moved out of the starting blocks of um, getting the water use licenses and the um, environmental impact assessments and all the preparatory work, the bankability, the financing arrangements, all of that has been concluded and construction is underway. By um, the time we did our, um, uh, our review in uh, the start of February, out of the universe of 152 investment projects, uh, 15 were running behind schedule. They were either uh, projects that were cancelled or put on hold. By the start of February also, so in this month, uh, something of the order of 315 billion rand of the investment commitments have actually been spent according to the companies that are reporting. And I raise that little caveat because there are some companies that are still due to report on the extent of their spending. So we anticipate that the number uh, ought to be uh, north of the 315 billion rand. And that's quite a significant increase to the uh, uh, amount of spending that we announced at the uh, conference, the last conference in November 2020, just over uh, a year ago. Where do we stand on the whole with our target? The uh, 775 billion, I'm, I'm rounding a little bit. Uh, the 775 billion rand uh, commitments and pledges that were announced at the last conference uh, as the sum of what had been uh, pledged over uh, the uh, three conferences as a whole amount to roughly 64% of our target. In uh, March this year, we have the second last conference of the five that's contemplated. And uh, within 12 months thereafter, we will have the wrap-up conference where the president uh, would be able to reflect on the 
achievements over the five years. Now, when we give uh, a number, it's devoid of any sense of um, uh, granular uh, detail or any sense of what these investments uh, um, entail. So I thought I would use uh, maybe a, a few examples just to illustrate the, uh, the kind of projects that have been completed. So in that uh, sum that I spoke of earlier, the 45 projects that have been completed, they include, among others, uh, examples of the following. The one is Aspen Pharmacare in uh, Tebecha. They committed uh, 3.4 billion rand at one of the investment conferences to create a world-class pharmaceutical production capability in South Africa. And based on that, at the time when the announcement was made, there was no um, uh, pandemic in place yet, and uh, they started to build this plant. During the course of uh, the construction, and as they were completing the plant, the pandemic hit uh, the world. Aspen was able to take this platform of a world-class manufacturing facility and repurpose it. And so what they did as the first step was to uh, enable the production of vaccines. They uh, put, out their, put up their hands and eventually reached an agreement with Johnson & Johnson for the J&J &J vaccine, which I know uh, members of the media took uh, uh, last year uh, sometime. And that J&J &J vaccine, uh, Aspen became one of the largest manufacturers of the vaccine uh, globally. Uh, they've produced on our uh, calculations more than 160 million doses of that vaccine here in South Africa. And we reached an agreement uh, last year that the bulk of those uh, uh, vaccines would be made available to the African continent in the first instance. So Africa would have first call on the vaccines that have been uh, produced uh, in, in South Africa. In that same complex, that same uh, facility that Aspen built, they also created the um, uh, manufacturing capability to produce uh, an anesthetic, an anesthetic that's used in, in hospitals across the world uh, during uh, uh, operations, including, by the way, in COVID-19, uh, when uh, patients are in the ICU unit and they need to be uh, sedated, they are um, uh, undergoing uh, treatment, they use a, um, a, an anesthetic called Propofol, which trades under the brand name Diprovan. Uh, up to now, South Africa has been importing all of the anesthetic, and today we are able to produce that anesthetic in Tebecha at the facility, the Aspen facility, as a result of the transformation of the plant uh, due to the, um, the investment commitment that was made at one of the investment conferences. And uh, the, the facility now hope, uh, as they ramp up production, and we launched the facility in uh, October last year, late October last year, with members of the media present, and everybody wore these suits uh, uh, look like you're from a Star Wars movie, but it was because this facility uh, had to comply with very stringent uh, uh, hygiene standards for the production of the anesthetic. So that's one example in the healthcare sector of what the investment uh, announcements are about. Let me take a second example, which are the vehicles that uh, uh, we all drive. Mercedes-Benz made a commitment of 10 billion rand in fresh investment during the 2018 investment conference. And in the course of building the uh, technical uh, ability to switch uh, to the production of the new C-Class vehicle, uh, the company not only expanded the, um, uh, the uh, facility, but also found ways uh, to, to strengthen their local supply chain. In June last year, uh, uh, I went to uh, uh, Buffalo City uh, and uh, uh, with members of the management and um, members of the media present, the new C-Class Mercedes-Benz was launched. And interestingly, it was 
Uh, it's a vehicle that's produced in only three cities in the world. Uh, I joked at the time that it looks like you, you needed to uh, have your name starting with a B because it's Buffalo City, uh, Beijing, and uh, Bremen. Uh, these were the three locations for the manufacture of the new C-Class vehicle. And this uh, vehicle will be exported from South Africa. In fact, is being exported right now from South Africa to about a hundred other countries across the world. But while the company was uh, uh, building this facility, uh, strengthening the facility, they realized that there were opportunities to do more than what they originally planned. So in addition to the 10 billion rand, they made an additional 3 billion rand available that was used to uh, construct a hang-on parts facility uh, at these London uh, IDZ, that's an industrial development zone, and to increase the paint shop uh, capacity, uh, the hourly throughput in, this, in the paint shop quite significantly. Uh, we were advised that um, approximately uh, 600 new direct jobs would be created from the investment, uh, and that is in addition to jobs elsewhere in the value chain. Uh, after visiting the Mercedes-Benz plant, I visited a supplier uh, in Buffalo City nearby that was now producing the door panels and the dashboards uh, uh, panels that are used in the uh, new C-Class vehicle. And that, of course, while it would not be covered directly by the Mercedes-Benz investment, it's an indication of how investment in one area can um, help to crowd in associated investment in uh, the supply chain. At the same time that Mercedes-Benz was planning their investment, a year later, uh, VM Automotive, uh, which is a component manufacturer, announced uh, a 426 million rand uh, 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 investment in a plant in uh, Buffalo City. This is a 100% black-owned a company, so it's a black industrialist that's trying to get into the supply chain, uh, in this case of Mercedes-Benz, and um, the company uh, uh, is now producing, um, uh, or is, is completing the, the work, the investment has now yielded the necessary capacity. But it's not only for, for those uh, who um, uh, drive luxury vehicles, uh, the, the other big investment in the car sector that was made was by Toyota. Toyota, uh, in 2019, uh, committed to a 2.4 billion rand investment in bringing a new generation vehicle to South Africa. And uh, it's a hybrid vehicle. It's a, uh, it's a mix between an ICE vehicle, that's the internal combustion engine, and an electric motor. And... Um, it goes by the name. I'm sure uh, many, many of us have started to see it uh, on our roads. It's the uh, Corolla Cross. It comes both in the standard version and in the hybrid version. And what, what's important about it and the relevance of me mentioning it is it's, our, um, it's a little bit of a foot in the, uh, a toe in the water uh, in shifting our auto production into new energy uh, vehicles. The cross will be exported to more than 40 countries, uh, principally uh, 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 on the African continent, and it uh, can be boosted by the work we're doing on the African continental free trade area. If I shift from cars to a completely different area, uh, Procter & Gamble, PNG, made an announcement uh, in the very first investment conference, they were going to make available 300 million rand to expand their facility in uh, Kempton Park to introduce two additional uh, product lines. They've now completed that, those product lines, which happens to be um, uh, babies' products and, and women's products, uh, are now in uh, production, and uh, they're also exporting into neighboring countries uh, from there. They've made a further announcement, a second announcement, uh, to further expand their Femicare uh, facility, and that, uh, that work is now underway. 
While I'm, I'm on PNG, we really, that's a significant consumer goods product. So the other consumer goods product would be food. And there to take another example, in 2018, a company called uh, Into Foods announced an investment of about 240 million rand. And they located uh, not very far from here, uh, near to Oar Tambo, at the um, uh, Special Economic Zone. And the company used that investment uh, uh, money that the shareholders had made available uh, effectively to build a state-of-the-art fresh food facility. And I've been told that this is the largest facility of its type uh, in the Southern Hemisphere. And the, um, I'm also told it's the second largest CO2 refrigeration facility uh, globally. And uh, uh, it's... Um, uh, created uh, 600 jobs. So they produce things like soup and pancakes um, and they export. So the, the, the reason for location near to our tumble is so that they service not only the domestic market, but they're also able to export to other countries using the logistics hub. There's a company, uh, a German company, which um, I guess it's about two years ago, uh, announced that they would do a 200 million rand investment in a food manufacturing plant in Selby uh, in Johannesburg. This plant has now been completed, 80 new jobs, uh, and they do, I'm sure you've seen it in supermarkets, they do these frozen pizzas and ready-made meals supplying major uh, retail chains. Now, it's not only in these areas. Often what we need to do is to, to look at logistics because investment needs to be in plants and, um, and workplaces that expand production. But the ability to move things to markets is a critical part of uh, uh, our competitiveness challenge. And uh, investing in those areas strengthens our ability there. So we've seen Bidvest, for example, um, uh, do a, uh, a major uh, energy logistics um, operation uh, in Richards Bay. It's an LPG storage facility that uh, is uh, very, very large, and they're able to supply uh, uh, LPG uh, from that facility. Uh, on the other hand, uh, you also have a company like Dimension Data, that's um, built a, a very large data center in Johannesburg. Uh, this was announced in 2020, uh, and the data center is ready to be launched. We just, but basically in the next month and a half, we'll find the appropriate moment when it kind of goes live, and um, there can be a public, uh, public announcement of it. Some of the projects have been completed, but they've not yet been uh, officially opened. So it's uh, doing the last bits of work to get it ready to launch. And in some cases, companies start uh, production runs. They do their quality control before the official opening. Let me just take one example, one or two examples that will be announced in the next uh, two to three months where the official openings will take place. One of it is the Sapi Cycle Mall uh, that uh, is a massive uh, project of about just over seven and a half billion rand. And they have expanded the capacity for dissolved pulp that is used in a number of applications, including uh, the paper, I guess, that I'm, I'm reading from. And that will be expanded from 110,000 tons uh, per annum to almost 900,000 tons per annum. There's a big uh, state-of-the-art brick-making facility that we also uh, are almost ready to officially launch. And there's one more big vehicle project that um, we expect to launch in April. Not one of the two uh, OEMs that I've mentioned, but the third one that is uh, said now that they're ready. Now, some of the, the uh, announcements that we've made uh, about work that we will commence has already produced uh, results. Others are uh, workplaces and production or logistics uh, or warehousing facilities that are almost ready to, uh, to open, and some are under construction. Uh, without question, the uh, COVID uh, uh, period has slowed down some of the uh, uh, construction, 
But what we saw is companies used uh, the beginning of the uh, the um, uh, co uh, co uh, COVID-19 vaccine period when it was safer for workers to uh, uh, work in, in larger numbers to try to speed up construction and bringing their operations uh, into um, uh, production. So we've seen a, an uptick in the work that has been done on the pledges that have been announced. And we're really looking forward uh, very greatly to uh, the investment conference. The conference this year will take quite an interesting form. And Trudy Makai will be taking you through uh, what uh, uh, is intended. We will provide at the conference also more details on the past investments uh, with uh, companies uh, present there, uh, video footage, uh, all sorts of information that will provide further details. Obviously, given uh, the time and the need to, to use this really just to illustrate it, I've taken a couple of examples rather than an exhaustive list. So, um, uh, DJ, from my side, thank you very much. Uh, a big part of the success of what we do comes from our partnership with the private sector. I know the private sector players will have an opportunity to, uh, to make some remarks on um, the partnership and the investment uh, prospects, uh, but I, I'd like to, uh, to appreciate this opportunity to have said a few words, really just to open up uh, the uh, uh, briefing and to leave the heavy lifting uh, to uh, Trudy, who will be a... Uh, uh, giving you a better sense of what is planned on the 24th of March. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Minister. We can excuse you. You can take leave. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, can I now invite Ms. Trudy Makaya as our next, next speaker? Thank you. All right, thank you very much, uh, Program Director, and good afternoon to all those present. Um, I'm conscious, SABC, um, I have my computer over your mic. I hope you can still uh, pick up the signal. Um, so as the Minister has given um, a background um, on the investment mobilization drive, mine will just be to focus on um, some of the logistics and the character of this year's um, conference. So it will be held on the 24th of March, as has been mentioned, and as an in-person event, um, which would be supported by live streaming for those who are not able to make it. Uh, we know it was the, the conference was not held last year and we gave ourselves um, some time um, to just um, let the pandemic uh, play out um, and also to to host it at a time when we would have had greater vaccine coverage uh, we would have had a sense um, of where our conditions um, have landed and i think it, it was a good decision because as we can see now conditions are more benign at the moment uh, and there's uh, the possibility for greater participation like in previous years the conference will take place at the Senton convention center we will ensure that we meet all the uh, precautions that are in place um, at the time. If we held it today, uh, we would be able to meet all, all the precautions. Um, so we would have um, up to a thousand delegates uh, in person is what we're planning for. Uh, and they would largely come from the private sector as in uh, previous years. Um, at the venue, we'll obviously um, follow all the containment, social distancing um, and other regulations. There will also be several ministers and state officials um, at the conference. 
uh, public can follow updates um, at uh, the SA Investment Conference uh, website, uh, which will, closer to the time, uh, be populated with um, different developments and also during the conference. There will be live stream um, of, of uh, the conference on the internet and also a broadcast by the SABC. In terms of the theme of this year's conference, it is Unlocking Investment for Growth and Job Creation. The various objectives um, to what we will be discussing this year, we will be giving an update, as the Minister has mentioned, on previous investment commitments that have been made uh, in previous editions of the conference. So we will show real progress um, of companies that have been able to follow through with their investments, um, especially in the face of recent events, companies that are showing real resilience uh, in their economic activities. At the same time, we'll also be taking stock of government's actions since the last conference, particularly as regards to in, um, policy implementation. We often get this question, um, you know, that it's one thing to talk about um, investment, but what is government doing to create an enabling environment? In the State of the Nation, the President talked about some of the structural reforms that are underway, but the conference will be an opportunity to give a bit more detail uh, on, on the various reforms. And as always, it will just the conference will highlight opportunities for investment and tell um, the investment case for the South African economy. As in previous years, the President will open the conference. Um, it, will be held, it will be held over one day. The President's opening will be followed by a plenary session, um, really unpacking the case for investing in South Africa, a progress report on previous year's pledges, two sessions to announce new investments, 12 breakaway sessions on the sector themes, and then a closing address by the President. The sector themes will encompass the digital economy, impact investing, improving the business environment, tourism, infrastructure, creative production in the digital era, agriculture, trade, energy, mining, manufacturing, and district level development. This will be followed by a business dinner, and there will also be an ICT conference held on, on the sidelines of the main event, uh, ahead of the main event. The content of the conference has really been curated to showcase emerging opportunities in the economy. Um, for instance, the mining panel will consider the role of metals demand arising from the tech and green value chains. The panel on digital opportunities will consider success stories of South African business initiatives, including in fintech and in edtech. The intersection of the creative and digital industries uh, will also come under the spotlight as seen by the growth of streaming services and the rise of digital content creators will also be considered in another panel. The opportunities presented by the Just Transition, including ongoing work on the package that was negotiated on the sidelines of COP26, uh, will also be unpacked. Our collaboration with Impact Investment SA continues. Um, in the past, we used to have um, a, a conference the day before. This time, it will have uh, Impact Investing will have a dedicated panel in the main conference. Government will also share thinking around red tape reduction and reforms under Operation Bulindela will also be discussed. Um, these initiatives are important catalysts for raising the level of investments. As pandemic restrictions are lifted and economies recover, the panel on tourism will discuss job creation and growth opportunities in this sector, which had come under significant pressure in recent times. In the national budget that was recently presented, there were various um, details that were given on the fiscal resources and the institutional capacity that has been provided to the infrastructure investment drive. At the conference, we'll also have a session to talk more about the infrastructure fund. Following increasing exports in 2020 and 2021, the conference will also consider how to ensure sustainable growth in agriculture. We've seen record um, surpluses in various value chains in the agricultural sector, and so we'll be discussing new opportunities, how to sustain this growth, and also how to tap into new markets. 
material developments in the um, implementation of the African Continental Free Trade Agreement and growth opportunities will also be explored. In manufacturing, you heard the minister highlight some of the successes we've had in the past. Um, we will look at success stories and challenges from the master plans that are under development and also other initiatives to grow manufacturing in South Africa. Finally, the district development model as an enabler of growth and investment with the potential to secure social compacts at the district level uh, will also be um, explored. So these are the panels that we, we will have um, in addition to um, the plenary sessions. And as always, we would have um, two sessions with investment um, announcements. So that, in a nutshell, um, is where we are in terms of the character of the conference, the kinds of themes um, that we're going to discuss. And also just, I think, showing gratitude that we've been able to um, sustain the levels of investments um, that we have in, in the pipeline that has been highlighted despite the challenges of COVID, social unrest, um, and, and the general economic um, outlook. So I'll leave it at that, and we'll take questions later. Thank you. Thank you, Trudy. At this point, I would invite the representative from the Anglo-American, Mr. Pinar. Honorable Mr. Minister Patel, in your absence, uh, Ms. Trudy Makanya, leaders of government present and colleagues, a very warm welcome to you this afternoon. Thank you for inviting us as Anglo-American to deliver a message of support as we gear up to the fourth investment conference that's currently under discussion today and which is taking place in less than a month. Ladies and gentlemen, we are immensely proud of our deep roots in South Africa. As the leading sponsor of this year's conference and one of the largest investors in the country, Anglo-American is honored to partner once again with the South African government to promote our country as an attractive investment destination. Through Anglo-American's purpose, which is to reimagine mining to improve people's lives, we are ensuring that the mining industry continues to play its role as a catalyst for economic growth and development in South Africa. Recovery from the economic impacts of COVID-19 means that we must all do our part to rebuild more resilient communities and a better, more robust economy that attracts investment and creates jobs. At the first investment conference in 2018, we as Anglo-American committed 85 billion rand, signaling our belief in South Africa's investment case. Two years later, in 2020, we increased this commitment by 15 billion rand, bringing our investment commitment to 100 billion rand to date. We are pleased to announce that we are well on track to meet our investment commitment, which is being invested in sustaining, expanding, and extending the lives of all of our businesses in South Africa. Ladies and gentlemen, amidst a pandemic that has shocked the global and South African economies, we are proud to reiterate our commitment to playing our part in delivering on South Africa's immense growth potential. We believe that the scale and the breadth of our investment in South Africa's mining industry is critical for the country's economic recovery. To recap on our 100 billion rand investment commitment, here are some of the highlights. Firstly, we are converting and expanding our Venetia diamond mine in Limpopo to an underground mine. This is the most significant investment in the South African mining industry in over 20 years. Secondly, we are immensely excited about the opportunities for Platinum Group Metals, or PGMs, in South Africa. In the spirit of partnership, we, together with the Public Investment Corporation, have created a global venture fund to help stimulate existing and new sources of demand 
for South Africa's platinum group metals. Thirdly, we are developing a new pit at our Kumba Iron Ore Colomela mine in the Northern Cape, which will increase the production of high-quality shipping iron ore, which is globally attractive. This project secures the continuation of Colomela mine in Posmasburg up till at least 2032 and underscores Anglo-Americans' commitment to supporting the Northern Cape as an important region for the future of mining in South Africa. Fourthly, we are helping to make South Africa's mining industry safer, more innovative, productive and sustainable by investing in technologies. We are excited about the opportunities that innovation will bring to South Africa's mining industry. We are investing in step change technologies that offer widespread environmental and productivity benefits, such as the world's largest hydrogen powered mine oil truck, which we will begin testing in South Africa later this year. In addition, we plan to transition our South African operations to renewable energy sources to support the just energy transition for the country. Over the next few years, we will harness Southern Africa's vast renewable energy potential by developing, at scale, a regional renewable energy ecosystem made up of a network of on-site and off-site solar and wind farms, amongst other opportunities. And last but not least, our operations are drivers of economic activity far beyond their direct impact. Through Zamele, our renowned enterprise development program, we have sustained more than 50,000 additional jobs by supporting over 2,300 SMMEs in South Africa. We believe that mining will play a pivotal role in achieving a better future. However, we know that we cannot accomplish this alone. We all have to join together as a business, faith leaders, academia, communities, civil society and government to build sustainable and inclusive growth. Through this partnership and spirit of partnership, we can do so much more. We can help communities develop new skills, we can support education, we can build infrastructure and we can be a catalyst for economic opportunity for millions of our peoples. We hope that the coming conference will go a long way to forging these necessary partnerships. Thank you. Bye, Danki. Siabonga. Thank you, Mr. Pinar. At this point, I will invite Ms. Njovu, representing NASPAS. Honorable Minister in Abstentia, our lovely host, uh, DG Williams, uh, Ms. Trudy, um, our co-sponsors uh, from Vodacom as well as Anglo, and to the media in the room, as well as uh, everyone else, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. As a proud South African business um, that has grown into a global consumer business, um, and one of the largest technology investors in the world, um, it is so prudent that we ourselves recognize the value of investment and unlocking the potential of South African companies and the role of these companies in creating jobs, stimulating growth and encouraging investor confidence. As NESPES, we have seen firsthand that the right investment, business support and partnership can do a lot in growing the tech startups as well as um, increasing the requisite digital skills required in training and creating opportunities um, for young graduates. We have seen progress but have also recognized that there is still more work that needs to be done. It is for these reasons that as NASPAS we again have availed ourselves to sponsor the South African Conference. 
We are also encouraged that our peers, Anglo-American and Vodacom and others, have been able to return with us um, as sponsors and to support our country and continue to represent it as the best investment destination. Now more than ever, it is important for business, government, labor, and civil society to work together and help build South Africa's um, investment needs and um, growth. We believe that as, a, as the economy reopens, there will be growing recognition of South Africa as a world-class investment destination, which will include solid infrastructure, um, a young, hardworking, and talented population, and an investment destination that has the potential to be a leader in driving technology innovation um, in Africa and beyond. The technology innovation um, can unlock benefits and value for people within our country, especially as the country recovers from the COVID-19 pandemic. It is for this reason that we as NESPIS back, back talented entrepreneurs through our early stage 1.4 billion investment through NESPIS Foundry. NESPIS Foundry provides South African uh, focused tech company investments, access to markets, international expertise, and business support. To date, NESPIS Foundry has invested almost 600 million since its inception and launch in 2019 at this very um, same investment conference. NESPAS Foundry has a promising investment pipeline still coming, and we will be making several announcements in months to come. By supporting early stage tech businesses run by diverse local entrepreneurs, we continue to stimulate the local economy, create jobs, boost growth, help um, and help the transition to a more sustainable and equitable society. For instance, Nespas Foundry invested in an online um, platform, the Student Hub, which is an ad tech company that helps to overcome the physical infrastructure constraints faced by higher education by partnering with TVET colleges to deliver the course to almost 30,000 online students. Nespa's Foundry also invested in a woman-owned business, which is Sweep South, an online home and business cleaning service platform, which has fa facilitated more than 30,000 jobs um, since its inception, and it has helped many women employees to have a more flexible uh, working environment and decent pay. The company has actually now expanded into Kenya, into Egypt, and into Nigeria since its inception in 2019. We understand that the development of South Africa's early stage tech um, ecosystem will have a lasting impact on the broader economy. So our focus is on finding, investing in, and helping to grow the next big South African tech success stories. And there are many, many in the pipeline that we really believe in. We also established a youth social impact program called NESPAS Labs. This is meant to address youth unemployment in South Africa by helping young people gain uh, in-demand digital skills and uh, work readiness training. This includes providing training and skills development for roles in software development, cybersecurity, cloud computing, and data science, amongst others. NESPAS Labs is on a mission to help 10,000 young people access decent jobs opportunities and to create 20 self-sustained micro-businesses by 2026. To date, the NESPAS Labs um, has trained 1,531 young people and created 1,110 jobs in the tech sector. This helps in addressing the skills and educational needs that South Africa's youth requires to become more productive participants as the economy becomes more um, digitally driven. We also continue to invest in and grow our African consumer internet companies, including Take-A-Lot, Mr. D Food, Superbalist, Auto Trader, Property24, 
PayU and Media24. During the first investment conference in 2018, we pledged 4.6 billion in investing in new technology startups and in growing our existing South African businesses. We are encouraged by the tech investment opportunities in South Africa and look forward to providing an update at this year's um, investment conference. We ultimately understand that investing in technology has the power to transform our economy, create jobs, boost growth, and transition to a more sustainable and equitable society. Our commitment as NESPES to this year's investment conference is to continue to help promote South Africa as an investment, uh, as an attractive investment destination, to re-establish confidence in the country's economy, and to drive sustainable and inclusive growth as a proudly South African company. We are looking forward to a constructive and successful investment conference. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm inviting the last speaker, uh, Ms. Nechitenze, representing Vodacom. I never worry about touching objects. Mm -hmm. I only worry about aerosol because my daughter is a dentist. Mm -hmm. So I will not take off my mask. I've seen Minister Zuma address audiences with a mask on, so I'll follow suit. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I'm not a minister, anymore. <laughs> <laughs> minister Zamini Zuma. <laughs> uh, good day, Minister in absentia. Uh, thanks, uh, DG, and congratulations on your permanent appointment. Mm -hmm. And Trudy. Uh, the special advisor to the president on economic affairs, all of you in the room, uh, the media, and uh, the core sponsors. So Vodacom is no longer just uh, a mobile network operator. We are now a technology company that is driving digital transformation. We are leveraging emerging digital technologies such as big data analytics, the Internet of Things, and we are also now very much immersed in the financial services. And all of this is enabled by our network investments. So just to recap, four years ago at the investment conference, Vodacom made a pledge of 50 billion rents investment on our fixed and mobile networks over a period of five years. This was four years ago. I want to confirm that we are living up to that pledge so in the past five years, which goes back a year before the pledge, we have already invested 47 billion rands on our network. Last year, the year that ended March 2021, we invested 10.1 billion rands on our network. And this financial year, until December, which is the third quarter, we have already invested 7.9 billion rands. So we are on track. And to enhance our, these existing investment, investments and our fi fiber footprint in the country. In November last year, some of you might remember, we announced an agreement on terms to acquire a strategic stake in CIVH, which is the parent company of Vumatel and Dark Fiber Africa. This will result in Vodacom acquiring a core controlling 30% stake in a newly formed company called Infraco, which will house the assets of CIVH on fiber and some of the assets of Vodacom on fiber. This deal is subject to regulatory approvals by both uh, the Competition Commission and ICASA. Vodacom will pay 13.2 billion rands, which includes shares, a cash injection, and our fiber assets as evaluated. And lastly, I need to emphasize that we are very much aware that the digital divide is still very, very wide. And therefore, the plan that we have and our ambition 
is to leverage this CIVH deal and the upcoming Spectrum auction that is happening next week, finally, hallelujah, <laughs> to accelerate both mobile and fixed broadband rollout in rural areas and in townships. This will help us to contribute to bridging the digital divide and to ethically drive digital transformation in government services, especially in health and education. Having seen what we have seen during COVID when children, mainly from quintile one, two and three schools, were excluded from online education. We are confident that are these big ambitions that we have will go a long way to foster inclusion for all, to foster access to communication by all, and to unlock social and economic opportunities. We are looking forward to the conference and we are calling on more investors to come on board. We remain committed to do our part, not just as a sponsor, but as a committed investor in the country. Thank you very much. Thank you very much uh, to the panelists. I did commit that we will allow you an opportunity to ask uh, any questions of clarifications. But may I also say that this is not going to be the last engagement before the 24th of March. Uh, the, we will be having a series of engagements. But at this point, I'm inviting you to ask any questions, if there are any. Going, going, gone. Uh, thank you very much. But at this point, may I invite Mr. Tsepo Ramudibe to give us the closing remarks and also to say uh, she will remain a part of us as we journey together with the members of the media to make sure that you, you cover this event. So over to you, Tsepo. Thank you, um, Ospumla, for hosting us this afternoon. On behalf of the organizing committee, uh, I'd like to start off by thanking the minister in absentia, Austrudi, for the walk through the update, Vimpi, Helen, Daiki, for your recap on the rationale and support for the investment conference, which was really about investment for growth jobs, uh, job creation for better South Africa. And the theme that we've, that truly presented speaks to the very same outcomes. The pledge remains the same. The target has always been set, 750 billion. The minister recapped and gave an update on how much has been pledged, but what has been converted in real tangible projects and jobs created. A lot more will be unveiled at the investment conference itself. But to our partners, the investment conference is a significant event in showcasing South Africa as a conducive investment, you know, a conducive place for investment. And for us, when we do showcase the proof points around what has been achieved, even with bumps in the road, we will definitely walk away in ensuring that more additional investment is galvanized and, you know, and invested in our country. So today marks exactly 25 days to the investment conference as a collective with our partners in support, all hands on deck. We look forward to partnering not only with you as colleagues, the media, to tell the stories of the real impact and tangible evidence of the investment conference to date, we look forward to working as a collective led by the presidency to ensuring that we're able to showcase our true potential 
we're able to be generous hosts, not only to international investors, to our local partners, but also to tell the men on the street around the real value of what this means from a job creation, more so as we work towards the reconstruction and recovery of our country. On behalf of our Strudy, the team, and all our partners, thank you for coming today. As our Pumla indicated, this is really first in a series of update sessions as we work our way towards the investment conference itself. And even after that, we'll be giving feedback on the fourth installment and what we look forward to in the year ahead. Thank you very much. Thank you. And this brings our press conference and briefing to a closure. Thank you, Ospumla. Thank you.